Hi and welcome back to Siren Crypto. I'm Becky and today we're going to talk about moving averages, which is a classic trend following system. Moving averages are a popular approach for many people, particularly if you're a medium or longer term investor. And many of them will look at moving averages, but of course traders look at this too. To find out a bit about the theory of moving averages and how we can use them, let's take a look at how it should work according to the textbooks. Firstly, here's our disclaimer. This tutorial is for educational and illustrative purposes only. We are not responsible for any investments made applying this information or buying or selling recommendations. Siren Crypto are not licensed investment advisors. We make no recommendations to purchase or sell any kind of coin, option or security. Any investment contains risk and is 100% the responsibility of the investor to assess the risks and rewards involved. Trading the crypto market involves a high degree of risk and you may incur financial losses if you engage in this activity. We at Siren Crypto take no liability, assumed or implied, from your application of the information we share within our training programmes. Let's cover some of the basics of the moving averages. We will have a look at a fictional market that has been trending lower. Let's say we're using a 20 day moving average on this market. So the price of the moving average, the value of that moving average, that's the average price of the market over the last 20 days. So this gets plotted every day. If the market is trending lower, our moving average will be above the market price. Because the moving average is taking into account the higher prices from the past, we've drawn the moving average in here in green. It's following the market lower, following the trend of the market, staying above the market because the market is in a downtrend. Now let's look at a market that has turned a corner and is trending up. If we look at our moving average on here again, it's taking into account lower prices from history over the last 20 days in this example, then it's going to be lagging underneath the market. So the moving average will have a lower value than where the market is currently trading, if that market is in an uptrend. This is all well and good, but how do we get the signals? Well, at some point, if the market changes from being in a downtrend to being in an uptrend, our market price and our moving average, in this case our fictional 20 day moving average, cross over and let's see now what that looks like. So the market has made a bottom here, it's turned a corner and the buyers have come back in and the price has started to rise. As our moving average is a lagging indicator, it will take a while to turn around but the signal does happen here as indicated. It's when the price crosses above the moving average, as you can see from this example. The price had been moving lower, our moving average was moving lower. The price then turned a corner, so when it crosses above the moving average, this is our buy signal. It's a simple price and moving average crossover. Of course, the reverse happens at the end of an uptrend. Let's take a look at that. When the market starts to turn and falls, when it falls below that moving average, that's our simple sell signal. This works absolutely perfectly if we have markets that just go straight up and straight down and they will cross through the moving average very cleanly and give simple, reliable signals. However, in reality, when markets chop around and they're trading sideways, you will get plenty of false signals. That's unfortunately one of the drawbacks of using moving averages. They're great in trending markets, but they will generate lots of false buy and sell signals in markets that are going sideways. The fictional example we have used here was a 20 day moving average. You can use whatever value you want, of course. If you use a quicker moving average, like a five day, a seven day, a 10 day, they will be much closer to the price on the chart. However, they will get you into a new trend quicker than maybe a 20 day moving average, but they will be inclined to give more false signals. Okay, so that's the theory behind moving averages. Now, as we all know, it never works quite exactly perfectly in the real world. So let's see how moving averages would have done on a real chart. Let's take a look at this chart. This is TRX paired against US dollar tether. And let's have a look at the signals we would have received. We're working here on a one day time frame, and we'll look now and I'll show you how to add your moving average on. So firstly, click into indicators at the top of your trading view chart. Then type into the search area moving average and then select the moving average indicator. This will automatically be applied onto your chart. 
Then click into the cogwheel to go into settings. Select inputs and type in 20 and that's to change the length to a 20 day moving average. If you wish to, you can change the style of that. You can change the color of the line by clicking into style, choose your color. You can choose the, the thickness of the line and then press save. This is a great example. We can see where the market is falling. The moving average is lagging behind. When the market is rising, the moving average tends to be underneath the price. Let's walk through some signals. There was a brilliant sell signal back here. You can see the market had been above the moving average and then fell below. And over the course of the next few days or a week, we have a flash crash where it falls if almost off a cliff. So that sell signal worked particularly well. You can see it flip around here when the market moves up. So it's saying close a short and go long. But this you know, can get a little bit messy. And I'll, I'll show you some examples of where it has some chop with the moving averages. Let's change this chart to an hourly chart. We're looking at hourly candlesticks. We still have our 20 moving average on, but as we are on an hourly chart, it's a moving average based on the last 20 hours. So you get a lot more signals, but of course, hand in hand with that, when the market goes sideways, like the periods that you can see here, we have a lot of the price moving above and then below and then above and then below, the moving average generating false signals, which can be frustrating without any other confirmations. But when the market does start trending with a massive move, we do have the moving average capturing the bulk of that trend. So as usual, it's not a magic system on its own that's going to be right all the time. It's good to be in trending markets. You just need to be aware when markets are going sideways, you will have lots of false signals generated from the moving average. That's it for this video. We will be looking at moving averages again and smoothing out those false signals. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you don't miss out on all of our videos by clicking the subscribe button. You'll get notified when our next lesson is uploaded. Well, I'm Becky. Thanks for watching Siren Crypto and I'll see you on the next video. Happy trading.